Hello, my name is Richard Lund. Welcome to my version of the fasting mimicking diet. I call it the redneck style. <laughs> anyway, today I am going to eat a limited amount of, of calories, certain selected foods. It's based in general in the work of Walter Longo. He has an excellent product that they offer through the El Nutra company called Prolon. I wasn't able to afford that, so I'm doing what I can afford. This morning, I'm using macadamia nuts as my primary breakfast food, and I'm using quite a bit uh, this morning. I'm using 75 grams. It's a little more than two times what I'll be eating for the other morning meals for the rest of this week. It's a five-day program where you eat a limited amount of food and you know keep supporting your, your body in a basic way. But then on the other side of the coin is it allows your body to sense that it's starving or losing calories and in order to survive things change inside the cells and some of the cells do some cleanup some of the cells die and it's a it's an interesting idea it's as old as as human history fasting has been part of life for many peoples especially uh, in uh, religious circles but and sometimes of course through famine that's not a pleasant way to, to uh, fast. However, this is something that I tried last month. I was able to get through it okay. And I've determined that it probably would be helpful for me down the road, especially since I still have some weight to lose. I, I still have a goal of living a long life, and I want it to be a healthy one. So today I have my macadamia nuts as my primary fat source, and it has some fiber. And I also have some cooked spinach, about a quarter cup, with one teaspoon of nutritional yeast. That adds about uh, two grams of protein. For the day, my goal is to be close to uh, about 10, I'm sorry, 20 grams of protein, which would be about 80 calories. My, my total for the day will be maybe about 800 calories. So 10% of protein is the target from Walter Longo, both for the fasting mimicking diet and also for the long-term eating plan. And protein, in his view, drives forward aging. And so we want to limit it to what we need. And we probably take in a little bit more at, uh, you know, at his normal recommendation of 10% of our calories from protein. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and eat. I've got some tea I made from American ginseng tea and hibiscus you know, as which is an uh, herbal tea. This is the package for hibiscus and uh, American ginseng I've got over on the counter over there. So um, I chose those because they worked pretty well last time. I felt pretty good. And I will be um, having also some glycerin this time. I figured out a source for glycerin and I'll be adding that to some water and drinking that through the day. I'll be having some uh, soup and crackers for both lunch and for my uh, dinner meal. And then uh, I'll have a few snacks of some olives and possibly some mushrooms. So that's the, uh, that's the idea. Um, so thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you for the next, next version, the next episode as we go through this week. I hope to record uh, during each meal and uh, if I do anything extra also uh, so you get an idea of what's going on and also try to share with you how I feel. This morning I feel okay, a uh, fairly stressful weekend, but um, I think I'm going to be okay. So thank you. Well, hello. It's uh, lunchtime on day one of my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. And I have I've got two bowls of tomato soup here one of which I'm going to set over there, save that for dinner. So this is my other part of this, which is the rightfoods.com product called Dr. McDougall's tomato soup, organic, whatever. And I've got a Norwegian cracker uh, with a bunch of seeds on it. And that's my lunch. And I've also made myself some tea, which is going to be good. I did have some coffee this morning, and I also had a cup of green tea. And I did a lot of walking. I think this is a good way to exhaust 
all of that glycogen from my body. <laughs> glycogen is the way our body stores, a rate, or, well, glycogen is the storage product, and it's a storage product for glucose. We're trying to reduce glucose to an absolute minimum with this and switch over the body for the liver to start making what are called ketone bodies for energy to keep our brain alive and th other things working. And um, that's kind of what that's about. I wanted to mention something too in terms of, you know, figuring out how much, how much uh, foods have in them. If you see that something has a certain number of protein uh, grams, grams of protein, then you can multiply that times four and that will give you how many calories are coming from the protein. The same is true of carbohydrates. If, it, if the label says it has 20 grams of carbohydrate, that would mean it has 80 calories. And in the case of fat, it's a different multiplier. So if you have, let's say, 10 grams of fat in something, it has 90 calories. So multiply by 9 times the number of grams for the number of calories in fat, multiply by four times the number of grams for the uh, amount of calories in either carbohydrate, carbohydrates or protein. And the goal of this diet is to reduce protein to a bare minimum. So that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> I truly am plum tuckered out and uh, probably not the nicest person to be around. <laughs> But, oh well. <laughs> so that's lunch on day one. Again, this is month two. I'm Richard Lund. This is not the Prolon product. This is my own version of Dr. Walter Longo's fasting mimicking diet that I pulled together because I didn't have the bucks to spend with this company. See you later. Well, here we are at the dinner meal of day one for my second month of the fasting mimicking diet, <laughs> redneck style. Today has been a very difficult day. I did uh, a couple of walks that were not extremely far, but maybe a mile or so. And I just got really, really tired. Um, I have to say I was surprised because the last time my day one wasn't as difficult as today has been. And uh, I also think I delayed the start of my eating for the lunch and dinner meal a little later than normal. That might have been part of it. So what's the lesson? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess the lesson is that one should not expect an easygoing time and if it happens to be easy going it's a plus i got my tomato soup i got my cracker i got my ginseng tea american ginseng my favorite and i did have a snack this afternoon of four olives they're green olives and that's i think three come in the package from um and the prolon product but after i had my third one i thought i want another one and this, the olives bring just a little bit of fat and some salt. I think one concern for the fasting mimicking diet is that we don't uh, flatten out our electrolytes. And so um, I also had two, uh, let's see, shiitake mushrooms that were, they were in a jar, so they're canned. And quite frankly, they're quite filling and um, not terribly, you know, don't have a lot of calories or protein or anything. So I was real happy about that. And uh, you can hear the car going by, so you know it's a real person talking to, uh, about a real life. Thank you for listening. I guess we'll see you tomorrow morning. Well, good morning. <laughs> it's day two in month two of my fasting mimicking diet redneck style. I'm Richard Lund. My breakfast this morning, uh, I've gone down to 33 grams of nuts. I have mostly uh, pecans and uh, a few macadamia nuts. And then I also have some spinach, about a quarter cup of cooked spinach with one teaspoon of nutritional yeast. 
Now nutritional yeast is the same yeast as what we used to call brewer's yeast, but it's grown on a different media. And uh, I think that affects the flavor or some something about it. We'll go into that some other time. But just to say that I decided to add this to give me just a little extra uh, B vitamin push. And uh, I have one other supplement I'm actually going to take today. I have some krill oil. Uh, this is made by Nature Sunshine. Now, Nature Sunshine is an unusual company. It's not that everybody makes supplements and vitamins and so forth. Okay. But Nature Sunshine, and I've, I've visited their plant twice. Uh, I, years ago, I got to know the people that were in charge of it, the people on the scientific side. At that time, they had three PhDs on staff just to run their HPLC system. They tested everything. They tested, you know, for any kind of problems you could have. And if the uh, material they got in from their suppliers didn't pass the, the smell test <laughs> or, you know, the scientific evaluation, they simply wouldn't use it. And even if they were out of stock, that was okay. So Nature Sunshine is one of the rare companies that makes supplements that does their own testing and they do it in a very comprehensive way. I, I trust everything. Whenever I buy a Nature Sunshine product, whatever's on the label, I know it's in there. And it's nothing different. 85% of the supplement manufacturers in the U.S. have somebody else make it for them. <laughs> so, and you know, those folks are probably also not going to have their own high-tech high lab. I'm not saying that they don't make good products. I'm just saying when, when you hear news reports about supplements. Many, many times they'll, they'll have 20 different brands they bought and 18 of them had other stuff in them that weren't supposed to have or they had didn't have the right amount or they didn't even have maybe the, the herb in the thing that they say they have. And um, others, <laughs> others have, uh, let's say, a, a vitamin pill that never breaks down in the body. It just goes right through. <laughs> and I've seen x-ray pictures of these little uh, little dots <laughs> in the body of these kind of you know vitamins or whatever they were. So um, it's important for the body to be able to actually break them down and absorb them. And these guys, they do that. This is not a commercial for Nature Sunshine. I used to sell it, I don't anymore, but I'm just telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a good product. I, partic I had some krill oil on hand and I didn't have any fish oil on hand right now. I don't take a lot of supplements right now. When I've switched over to my, you know, starch solution way of eating, a lot of starches with fruits and vegetables, I sort of realized it's the food. <laughs> That's what makes the difference most of the time. And in fact, the uh, fasting mimicking diet, both from Prolon and my own Regnac version, is the food. <laughs> so. That's what we do. We get to eat food, real food. Anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> um, I'm feeling a lot better this morning. <laughs> I, I slept a long time. Feel feel a lot better. Hopefully it'll stay. And uh, the other supplement I'll talk about later is from a company called Nutristem, or the company's actually Natura Therapeutics. And the product is called Nutristem. And they have this one that's called Active. I, I'll just say that um, this is from a small company in Florida. It is based on research done at the University of Florida for rebuilding the body after stresses and so forth. And I kind of guessed that uh, the, uh, nu the l Nutra Prolon product, which includes some supplements that are labeled as NS1 or NS3 or something like that, because this is called Nutra Stem, Maybe they buy from them. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. What I did look for when I was looking for things that would rebuild the body is there were a lot of things online that were offered and with no particular support or reasoning. But this particular one had both scientific research at a university and they had also been able to get some funding from the National Institutes of Health so this is why I'm guessing that El Nutra probably uses their product. I don't know if it's true. 
It's just my guess. When you have people who are normally, you know, dealing with NIH and normally dealing in a university setting, they would have a tendency to, you know, talk to each other. <laughs> so, and there may be many other good supplements that help people. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on, on the rebuilding part of it. And even this, I, I'm just taking on the word that their ingredients are going to help. I'll talk about that later, what the ingredients are. So, and I have my American ginseng tea. I'm reusing the tea bags from last night. I put in two, I put two, you know, my second uh, infusion, and that'll probably be enough, and I'll probably use fresh bags later. And then I got some green tea leaves from my friend yesterday who served it to me in a little cup with some water, and I saved them. And I took it home, and I put it in this tea glass. Now, the tea glass has this little gizmo in there that you would think, if you were an American, that you would put your tea on the top here and then let the water infuse it. <laughs> but what this, the real purpose of this is to strain the water so that you don't have to eat the tea leaves when you drink the tea. Now, in China, uh, you know, when I visited there, I noticed that the tea glass in the, in the hotel room where I stayed had no strainer. And people would just pour water in on the tea leaves and uh, drink the tea and eat the tea. They do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know Mandarin. You know, I've, I've learned how to say ni hao, you know, whatever. But um, don't know. <laughs> don't know much about that. But I have noticed that for the Chinese folks who have thousands of varieties of green tea and other teas that they like, oolong also, of course, and well, I won't go into that. But just to say that um, I think they, they refer to taking their tea as eating their tea. Maybe I'm wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Leave it in the comments if you know better. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to go back to uh, what I came to do, which is eat food real food <laughs> and drink nutritious drinks and uh, I look forward to Saturday when I get to go back to my oatmeal and my potatoes and other starchy things but today I'm being a good boy and sticking with the program. Well here we are at lunchtime for my fasting mimicking diet the redneck version on day two and um, I have some good uh, organic quinoa vegetable soup from rightfoods.com, Dr. McDougall's product line. We have the soup here, and I've got my cracker here with the seeds. And this is lunch, and I also made some green tea. But today, you notice I've got some water up here, and I'm, I'm going to make... I didn't mean to display. I'm not trying to push Fiji water. It's okay. It's good water, but... That's not why I'm here. But I want to show you a bigger jug. <laughs> this big guy. This is a gallon of glycerin. I think it was about 30 bucks, something like that. Got it delivered. Um, here's the deal. We, if we're going to try to kind of figure out how to make the glycerin water dilution, we're going to just guess a little bit. So somewhere between, let's say, 12 and 20 five uh, grams, which would be roughly equivalent to 12 to 25 milliliters. And so if you have, I have my uh, one tablespoon measuring spoon. I don't want to pour from the big jug into this because I'll probably spill all over. And you know, that's not as, it doesn't look professional. So I'm going to set that here. We're going to pour a little bit of this stuff into my glass here. Oop, I'm sure that's more than I need. It's kind of syrupy looking. And then I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to do this. Move stuff around. I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I think probably about, I'll, I'll call it four tablespoons of this. One. Oh, that's weird. I'm not sure if it's going inside or outside. 
two. Ah, you can see I'm making a mess already. <laughs> and four. <laughs> I'm a kid, you can tell. I'm going to set that over there. Set this over here. Uh, let's see, I did mess up a little bit and I've got it running down the side of the bottle, but that's okay. We're just going to put that on, do a little bit of that business, and this will become my drink for the rest of the day, along with some other water if I need it, or tea or whatever. So getting back to lunch, uh, soup, crackers, tea, and that's lunch. So this is the ingredient I didn't have last time. I'm going to see if this helps stabilize my hunger pangs. Anyway, that's the idea. We'll catch you later. Here I am at dinner time on day two of my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. And um, these are a couple of the things I'm having as a snack when I need them, which is in the afternoon. These are uh, canned shiitake mushrooms. And they don't have a lot of protein, a little bit of protein that's measurable, but basically they're kind of a zero sum game, maybe one gram of protein. And the other one are pitted Gordal, Gordal, <laughs> Gordal green olives, and they must be from Spain if it says Iberica, product of Spain. So that is, you know, I don't want to say a safety net, it's just something to kind of get you through. And I also did drink that fluid that I made up with the glycerin and the water today. And I finished that up. That's sort of an interesting thing. I don't know uh, what to think about it, except, you know, it's okay. So I have my second bowl of soup and my cracker and tonight decaf coffee. So uh, I walked about a well, half a mile or so maybe a little bit more than that, and uh, it got me pretty tired. And I have to say, how much energy do I have? Not much, <laughs> not much. That's what I mean, not much, not much, not much. <laughs> it's a little bit, you can tell I'm a little bit loopy. So anyway, we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Hi, it's morning three of my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. And I got a bunch of stuff piled up on the table today. The one thing I don't have piled up is the vegetable glycerin. What I found was last time, last month, because this is month two, last month when I did this pr program, in the morning of day three, I had a distinct taste in my mouth. And I believe the taste was acetone. It's the thing that after you start to produce ketone bodies, it's an end product that you get rid of along with this carbon dioxide, car, sorry, carbon, yeah, carbon dioxide. Now, um, there's that beta hydroxybutyrate, which is kind of a cool, cool name for something. Uh, you know, the chemists, they love to have cool names. So that's, I'll give it to them, not being a chemist. <laughs> so that converts to the acetoacetate. I said acetyl last time, it's acetoacetate. And then from there, you get acetone, which is you know the end product that you get rid of. And I think whether you pee it out or breathe it out, I'm not really sure, but you get rid of it somehow. And of course, the CO2 you get rid of by exhaling. Now, yesterday I, I took that, that stuff and you know took some of it and put it in my water. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't have that taste in my mouth today, so it tells me something's different. And I don't think it's in a good way at least for my body, for the way I work. And I think, you know, varies. People will vary, they have different uh, approaches. So I'm not going to add it today. I don't think I'll add it tomorrow uh, or um, on day five, <laughs> at least right now. That's the way I feel. Or maybe I'll add just a tiny bit. Last time I had some uh, little extracts that were in glycerin. And so I got a tiny bit of glycerin that way, and that's fine, and that worked fine for me. And so I might do that. 
but we'll, we'll see. I do have one little uh, capsule. It's not really a capsule, it's a, uh, a soft gel from Nature Sunshine. Remember that I told you about the company. And this is uh, some krill oil, which has a little bit of EPA and DHA in it, which are, you know, for the brain or other fats, wherever you need them. And um, I decided to take another one today. So I'm going to do that while you watch, <laughs> while you watch and wait and uh, get, get my, my Fiji water open. The reason that I chose Fiji water as a water to have as bottled water. Now, I realize I'm holding a plastic bottle. Those of you who, you know, care about the earth and think that all plastic should be sent back to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> where it came from. That's a joke. Okay, I don't know where it came from. Um, this particular water has quite a bit of silica in it. And silica is something that helps the body get rid of aluminum. Aluminum is not a required daily intake environmental thing, and yet we get it from various things over the time of our lives. Maybe you're having food cooked in an aluminum pan, or maybe you're having food that's wrapped up in aluminum foil, or maybe you're drinking a can of Coca-Cola in a seamless all-aluminum can. That's, uh, you know, that comes back from the 60s when I was a kid, maybe even the 50s. Uh, when they started using these uh, these new cans. And, um, you know, when I was a, a little boy, the only way to get Coke was in a bottle. And it was a six and a half ounce glass bottle in the, you know, classic Coca-Cola shape. And then what happened was <laughs> other people came up with larger bottles. <laughs> you know, Coke had six and a half ounces, 7-Up had seven ounces, and Pepsi had eight ounces. And then to top it all off, Royal Crown Cola at 10 ounces. Okay, maybe you're not from, you know, the Northland, like I was Minnesota boy. So you never got anything. Royal Crown would be like a Canadian thing. Well, we're getting off topic, which is fine, you know, because it's, <laughs> it's my video. I can do what I want. <laughs> but maybe you don't care. So we'll say thank you very much and uh, Fiji. That's, that's the reason I buy it. It's not because I want them to pay me money. It's just because I think this is a, a good water to drink. And it comes in plastic bottles. So, you know, that's what I can do. I am going to take some hibiscus tea. And I've put hot water in my mug already. I'm going to take some of this, one of these tea bags, and put it in here with the other one. I already have the other tea bag in there. But I wanted to show you the brand that I use for this is American Ginseng Tea, the Root to Health from HSU apostrophe S. So I would pronounce that Suze. Uh, I don't know these folks, but I know that they make a really great American Ginseng product from Wisconsin, remember. That's where American Ginseng comes from technically these days. Some people, those crafty Canadians. <laughs> go Canadian, you know, no, I, I don't know. Go Maple Leafs, whatever they are, you know. So they have sometimes grown ginseng, you know, in their country. <laughs> but the, the people in, this gets back to the, you know, the trade wars. The people in Wisconsin put together some money and they made, they persuaded Congress to pass laws that said, that if it's called America, if it's called ginseng, it has to be real ginseng, Panax, Panax ginseng, or jinx, or Panax kinkopolia, or whatever the, the uh, herb is. But then American ginseng, th that term, could only refer to what was grown in Wisconsin. It should say Wisconsin ginseng, but American ginseng is what people were used to saying, as opposed to Korean ginseng or you know, red Chinese ginseng or whatever. But so that's I mean, it's a different herb and it has a value. It's just not as valuable usually for old people. Notice, <laughs> you know. So that's the deal. We have American ginseng from a good source. We have um, the hibiscus, which you know I bought it at a store that has some international stuff, and I have no idea where that box came from. <laughs> and, and then we have my almost empty glass of uh, glycerin, which I'm going to set to the side because 
I don't want it right now. Now for the breakfast. We have the same breakfast as yesterday, except I only have today just pecans, 33 grams. And uh, then I have my spinach and nutritional yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae for you science guys. Um, and again, it's grown, it's the same yeast as the brewer's yeast, except it's grown on a different medium. I don't know which medium. I didn't look it up. <laughs> so give me a break. Uh, this particular one I got at Trader Joe's. You can usually get it at any food store that sells healthy things. I, I know I could buy it at Sprouts. Um, there's a very famous um, brand that uh, I think Bragg's probably makes a, a version of it. And there's probably a bunch of others. So that's what that is. And that's, you know, people that eat plant-based diets sometimes use it as a, um, oh, let's say a, a, a cheesy flavor. So if they'll take, you know, raw cashews, grind them up, and they'll add some nutritional yeast, kind of makes a cheesy sauce. This is not a cooking show. <laughs> I got it. I guess last night was a tough night for me. And I think I remember on my previous five-day mimicking fast, uh, redneck style uh, process was that I had some nights where I really couldn't sleep well and last night was one of them. I finally got up about 4 30 and started dealing with some clients in, in Europe and they were happy to hear from me only I couldn't sleep and I kept thinking about stuff and then finally I suppose around 5 30 or 6 I fell asleep for a couple hours so the fasting mimicking diet is not a um, how to sleep well diet <laughs> maybe it is for some people but in this case, it isn't for me yet. Maybe maybe in a day or two, I'll sleep better. I really hope so. Um, other than that, uh, I have nothing to report except that, um, I, you know, I was pretty weary yesterday after I walked, after relatively short distance, maybe two thirds of a mile, something like that. So I would encourage you, uh, if you're gonna do any kind of a program like this, you just plan to kind of take it easy because you probably need to. I am hungry for breakfast and I'm going for it. So uh, peace and see you later, alligator. <laughs> well, it is lunch on day three of my fasting mimicking diet, the redneck version. This is hump lunch. <laughs> we have my organic tomato soup today, two bowls, two portions, and one is set aside for, for supper. And the other one is set aside for my lunch. I, I did get hungry this morning. I was working on some editing and I decided that I would have a snack. So I had you know some of the green olives and some of the um, shiitake mushrooms. I have my cracker, that Norwegian cracker from Trader Joe's. And I'm using my green tea alcohol free today. That's that's the stuff from Sprouts. I could put in about three or four squirts of stuff here. And green tea, sort of funny when you, I think of China. When I first started drinking tea, what I drank was black tea. You know, I didn't know it was called black tea. <laughs> I was just Lipton tea or whatever. And there were some other brands that were kind of fun. Uh, Vysotsky was one that I remember from my travels. Um, there might have been some others. Uh, there's, I've forgotten the name of the British one that's kind of fun. But when I began to explore Chinese herbs and teas and things, I remember being in, in a Chinese herb store in New York and they sold tea that was bulk. And I said, I want to buy your best quality black tea. And they looked at me with <laughs> this puzzled look like no one ever asked them that before they did have some black tea somewhere I, you know i can't remember it was like six dollars a pound or something like that but it wasn't anywhere near the high quality you know good stuff that was 100 or 200 dollars a pound eventually i learned a little bit more about tea when i went to china and one of the things i learned was that they have about maybe 12 to 14,000 varieties of green tea in china and they export about 2,000 of them. However, uh, when I thought about the history of China, I thought, yeah, when the, when the English showed up with their ships and whatever, you know, their intimidation techniques, the Chinese probably looked at them and said, 
these folks are the ones I'm going to sell that old tea to, fully oxidized tea. And so England got the black tea. <laughs> I always think that's funny. I don't know why. I'm sure it tastes good. If you like black tea, if you like English breakfast tea, if you like, you know, bergamot uh, in your Earl Grey, more power to you. Those are good. I enjoy them. But there's something about green tea. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my soup. I got my my uh, cracker, and I got my tea made, and I'm ready to let you go. And I will talk to you later. Hello. It is third day of my fasting mimicking diet, redneck style. And this is supper. Some people call it dinner. Some people call it supper. <laughs> this is just a, you know, a bowl of tomato soup, a cracker, and some green tea extract made into a tea. I did put a quarter teaspoon of vitamin C powder in there, just just because. I have been I would say distracting myself by listening to various people talk. I've been listening to a guy named Rath, R A F R A T H, not the W R A T H. Anyway, um, so he's a big, uh, a big fanboy. That's not the right word. Right word. <laughs> he is a scientist who who believes that uh, vitamin C, along with proline and and uh, lysine and perhaps uh, EGCG and some other stuff uh, can help our circulation. For me, it's important to think about stuff like that because, quite frankly, you know, a bunch of my relatives came before me, died at an, at a, actually at an age younger than I am of atherosclerosis. So, thinking about it. Anyway, um, it's this is not about uh, lipoprotein little a and uh, vitamin C. This is about me getting through the day. <laughs> um, done okay today, uh, but I have done no walking, so I think that's probably a benefit. Anyway, uh, let's see. I was going to talk about something, and I can't, can't remember what it was, so it really doesn't matter. I'm sure <laughs> whatever it is, by tomorrow morning, it'll pop into my little brain again. Thanks for listening. Well, it's a good morning. Uh, it's day four of the fasting mimicking diet, and this is my redneck version. Hi, I'm Richard Lund. Um, I, did, I slept much better last night. Now, uh, the, the, between night, days two and three, I uh, didn't sleep well at all. Not sure why. Maybe was it something to do with what I'm doing this week, or... Did I have other thoughts on my mind that were troubling me? I don't know. But I'm just reporting in. So you get the lay of the land as we go forward. I think I intended yesterday afternoon to talk about what I had had additionally yesterday afternoon between lunch and supper. Was uh, I did have my snacks. I had uh, four olives. I had um, green olives. And I had two of the mushrooms, the shiitake mushrooms that were canned. And additionally, I took the juice of one lemon and put it in a glass of water and drank that. So, uh, not a lot of calories, not much sugar, but a little, but some good vitamin C, a little acidic nature. I don't know if that's important, but um, it, it was something that helped to sustain me. And this morning, I begin again with my quarter cup of cooked spinach with one teaspoon of nutritional yeast and uh, 33 grams of pecans. These are not the, not the, not the sugar-coated kind, <laughs> not the kind that you want to eat on your cookies. Um, well, maybe you would do, you know, but uh, I've seen these are just plain raw or however they come, ordinary pecans. And... Um, Looking forward to today. Uh, so, see what, what it brings. Thank you. Well, it's lunchtime on day four of my fasting mimicking diet redneck version. 
And so I have uh, today is the quinoa vegetable soup from Dr. McDougall's Right Foods. And uh, again, I ordered this because I knew the source and I picked one with, you know, very low protein. And uh, that's the reason this, these were also available. You know, uh, they were out of stock on one other that I was interested in. But it's been actually delicious. This is one bowl, which is half of this package. And then there'll be another bowl for dinner. So, and I have my fabulous Norwegian cracker from Trader Joe's with all the seeds. Coffee to drink. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Nutristem. Now this is the Nutristem Active, which is a product that has one additional ingredient over the, the base formula. The base formula has, uh, let's see, it has vitamin D3, which is at 2,000 units. Uh, it has a proprietary blend of green tea extract with um, 95 percent polyphenols and 45 percent EGCG or epigallocatechin gallate. So it's a catechin, catechin, and that is um, something that is in green tea. Uh, there are various ones, but that's the one that seems to have the most interest that I have seen in the past. Um, my friend Tom Leahy uh, used to get some from me. I, I had gotten some from China. Um, I had a su supplier there, and I had ordered, I've forgotten how many kilos of that, and uh, so we sort of <laughs> orchestrated back and forth uh, so I could get some Ludamax and he could get some EGCG, and of course, eventually I ran out. Somewhere I still have some 70% uh, EGCG, but the stuff that I had given him, I think, was 95%. Oh, and I was, so I'm going on for nothing, you know, but um, blueberry powder is another ingredient, and something called L-carnosine, which I'm presuming is a, a protein of some kind. Uh, not L-carnitine, which is a different protein, or would be a, an amino acid. So I, I'll, you know. And then the... Um, the other one is called rhodio, Rhodiola rosea, and uh, that's the other ingredient. It used to be called Siberian ginseng, and if you remember back to me talking about the American ginseng folks, uh, they passed a law, uh, got a law through Congress that said you cannot call Siberian ginseng Siberian ginseng. You have to call it something else. So people just go by Rhodiola rosea, or sometimes they'll say Rhodiola. Um, it's a pretty cool herb. It's a, it's an adaptogen, but that's I think the the primary core formula is the one that was studied at the University of Florida uh, without the uh, rhodiola rosea. Now there, as far as things in China or from China, Chinese herbs that were you know offered to help uh, produce stem cells or activate stem cells or whatever it is. The intent of this supplement is to help to stimulate the stem cells to re restore the cells that have been eliminated during the fast, especially during the last couple days of the fast. I think I will begin taking this today. In my mind, I was thinking that it would be wiser to wait till the last day of the fast because I'm not trying to rebuild anything until then. But it could be that uh, taking it a day early two days early, whatever, this will be a day early, would be a way to start building up this in the bloodstream you know, or in the body, wherever it goes, however it goes. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think the instruction are to take uh, two capsules as a serving. And there are 60 in here, so that would be a 30-day supply if you just took two. I might take two twice a day or two, three times a day, something like that. But I think today I'm just going to take two, and then tomorrow I'll probably take four or six over the day. And then on Saturday and Sunday, and you know, in the next, in the next several days, I'll probably take a, a larger amount, like four to six. Because that's when I do want the activation of the stem cells to happen. If those stem cells are going to start giving me new tissue, uh, replacing things that are have been wiped out, that's what I want. Anyway, that's... That's lunch today on day four, and uh, we'll see you for next time. Well, it's uh, day four, supper time. I've got my great <laughs> Norwegian cracker, 
and my soup. Um, I had my snack this afternoon. I had three olives and two of the shiitake mushrooms. And I had a glass of water with one, the juice of one lemon. T took my treatment with the uh, far infrared device that I talked about last time. It's that semicircular, semi-cylindrical uh, device that sits over you when you lay on the floor. And ran that for about an hour. Uh, it's a very soothing thing and it may help part of my body to get ready for getting rid of stuff and getting better. And I took my t two capsules of the, um, let's see, it's called uh, Nutristem. Nutristem from Natura Therapeutics, Inc. But, <laughs> maybe an hour ago, I realized I was really dragging. You know, uh, I have to say that the last time I did this five-day program, which is my five-day mimicking fast, you know, redneck style. I definitely felt about like I do now on the last evening of the last day, which meant I was really plumb tuckered out. And that's the way I feel. So, I'm going to try to go through it and finish, but it's a more difficult afternoon. So, we'll see what happens. But maybe I'll sleep well <laughs> and long, which will be fine. Anyway, thanks for listening. Well, it's a good morning. It is day five of my second month of my version of the fasting mimicking diet, redneck, redneck style. <laughs> uh, yesterday, toward the end of the day, I really, really was feeling it. I could feel sensations across my shoulders and down my, the backs of my arms. Very fatigued. And I didn't sleep real well, but, you know, I, get, I did eventually get some sleep in. I certainly laid down a long time, so I rested a lot. And I think rest is part of this procedure. It isn't that we want to be uh, sedentary. I think that's the 50 cent word for this. But... It is that we we need to give our bodies a chance to do what the body is doing. And I thought more about the, um, the Nutristem and have decided to continue taking more today. As I mentioned before, I think it's especially helpful toward the end of this fast and, and then for the next few days as I rebuild or repair or restore or rejuvenate is the word that uh, some use. And also I'm taking my one, um, it's actually a krill oil capsule. It has some vitamin K in it or K2 or whatever it is. And uh, some folks think that this is important. I actually have decided I probably will add fish oil to my uh, regular intake. But I want to get some good quality fish oil. Uh, I, again, trust the Nature Sunshine brand. I'll probably buy theirs or I may buy, buy some Carlson. I'm not sure. I've got my tea, American ginseng tea, and hibiscus today. And I think that American ginseng as an herb would be a good, a good herb to have in, on hand if one was going to try something like this, outside of the excellent uh, product from El Nutra called Prolon, which is I'm not doing because I can't afford it. But for those who can, um, they provide you what you need. And I think there is some algal fish oil there. Uh, Nature Sunshine doesn't make an algal fish oil, and so I may just live a little... I'm, yeah, I'm not against eating animals and fish and stuff per se. I'm just saying those are going to be rare treat foods for me, or have been for the last couple of years. I probably have meat of or fish uh, maybe once a month as part of my regular you know, eating plan. And I have a little bit more of that. It's about a quarter cup of spinach, more or less with one teaspoon of nutritional yeast and uh, my final 30, 33, <laughs> 30, 33 grams of pecans. I'm laughing because I can't seem to pronounce words this morning. <laughs> I, I don't know if, if that's a side effect or if it's just the fact that I'm 67 years old. <laughs>
could be both. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that is my that is my thank you for watching uh, time, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat and try to get some stuff done. Happens to be a day when it's going to get really, really hot where I live. Uh, so we'll see how I do later. <laughs> I may have to evacuate this afternoon and find a cool place like a mall or a movie theater <laughs> and hang out. Anyway, to, as they say, uh, among the cool people in the world, well, at least they did when I was a kid. Ciao. Well, it's uh, day five of my second month of my fasting mimicking diet, redneck style. And uh, I'm having lunch uh, of tomato soup you know, from Dr. McTougall, Right Foods, and my ever-present Nor Norwegian seeded rye cracker. It's a whole grain cracker with uh, about half the calories coming from fat, which are contained within the seeds. So if you really want to get the you know, the fat out of it, you got to chew. <laughs> and I'm having some, um, it's really not exactly green tea, it's really a green tea extract in hot water. One of the things I noticed about this other product that I've been taking uh, yesterday and today, the Nutristem, has the same ingredient, the green tea polyphenols, with the same concentration of EGCG that uh, that this product has. So before I knew it, I was encouraging my stem cells to come online and make some more cells. Anyway, that's what that's about. Now, I did notice that there's a new documentary on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I want to say, no, it wasn't Netflix. It was um, Amazon Prime called Fasting. And I listened to it last night because I wasn't sleeping so well, which means I didn't sleep that well last night. And it was okay. It had lots of different words that threw out there, but it might be a nice introduction for some people. And in that video, uh, among many other people, was was uh, Walter Longo, who created this, well, not this program, but the idea of fasting mimicking diet. And um, he talked about how it's very serious, it's kind of dangerous if you just go on on your own. Uh, I'm still here, so I think we're okay. Now, whether or not it's effective as his program from from El Nutra, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, there are some terms that people toss around, and which are important to think about. One of them is is that what we're doing is we're signaling through various uh, deprivation of certain things, including protein, very, very low protein. So we're dealing with about uh, 80 calories or 70 calories worth of protein today for the whole day, which would be around, let's say, 20 grams. That'd be 80 calories. And that is lower than I'm supposed to have normally. I would normally take in for for me, for myself, as on a low protein diet, I suppose around 60 to 80 um, grams of protein. So by reducing protein, then it allows two signaling pathways to be upregulated. One is called mTOR. I see. Actually, what that's downregulated under under low protein. So that's mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. Now, that probably isn't going to get you a discount at Starbucks today. So, you know, don't worry about that. But if you're curious, it's small m and then capital T-O-R. And if you, you could read about it. I'm sure lots of people have lots to say. So it's down-regulated when we have low protein. And also IGF-1, insulin growth factor 1, is down-regulated with low protein. In general, uh, that's one of the reasons why I stay with a relatively mild protein load on my diet. It also gives my kidneys a break because excess protein has to be gotten rid of somehow and the kidneys get involved along with the liver. So, um, 
the process of autophagy has been discussed. Uh, that that be um, it's there. Are, there's another word which I used, which I learned years ago. Talk about it's called apoptosis. Now I say apoptosis because that's the way the people on the continent or in Britain usually say it. Apoptosis is the way the Americans typically say it. It slides off my tongue a lot easier on apoptosis, so I'm going with apoptosis. Apoptosis is the orderly destruction of the whole cell. So when we have apoptosis, a cell dies, but it doesn't die in a nasty way. It doesn't die creating all kinds of uh, inflammation. It, it dies in an orderly way. And uh, interesting thing about the cells, and the more I study biochemistry, or I should say learn it, <laughs> learn about it, um, the more I'm convinced that there had to be some hand involved, not hand, a, a creator, okay, because it's just too complex to come out on its own. No, of course, you can whack me upside the head and say you don't believe me or unfriend me or don't listen or whatever. That's fine. Okay. If you think that there's this magic magic power called uh, evolution designed everything, <laughs> that that's what you call it. Okay. So I'm I'm just different than you. If if we're different, and we don't we might not be. You know, you might think the same way I do. Who knows? So uh, apoptosis I learned about from uh, Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, and uh, he was working on. Um, trying to find things that would cure cancer. And he showed that, you know, at least in the cell culture studies or perhaps in some other samples, that there was uh, what he called DNA laddering. And I guess it's probably in you know, Western blot or gel electrophoresis or some kind of test like that, uh, that you could see these bands and that indicated that he was getting apoptosis. Now, autophagy is a little bit different in that it does not destroy the whole cell, but what it does do is looks at things in the cell, and this is a process that is triggered by a reduction in insulin. Now, if you, if you don't have a lot of glucose coming in, you don't have much insulin created, so you have a reduction in insulin in the liver, and it also increases something called glucagon. Now, I won't go into glucagon because I don't know anything about it right now, and so I would be I would just be blowing smoke. And, you know, there's plenty of folks blowing smoke. <laughs> you don't need me to do it. So autophagy uh, also is, it's important to have the mTOR, let's see, it would be down-regulated in order to have autophagy occur. Autophagy, uh, autophagy can occur in many, many of the cells of the body. In fact, most of the types of cells. For instance, white blood cells uh, would undergo autophagy during this kind of a modified fast or in, indeed a, a, a true fast. So the autophagy is there are parts of the cell that aren't working well and they are get collected by a phagosome and then a lysosome, if you remember you know, from high school biology, <laughs> the lysosome was the thing that had the chemicals in it that would kind of make uh, tear, tear apart things. So the lysosome and the phagosome, phagosome is kind of like the vacuum cleaner or the, the dustbin or the, the, the dustpan, let's say, where you sweep up the things that aren't working very well in the cell and then the lysosome joins with it and then it becomes a, I can't remember if it's called a phagolysosome or something like that, but the idea of this is that then those ingredients of the cell are either repurposed for that cell or they're gotten rid of out of the cell uh, maybe sent back to the liver somehow, and that's all magic to me. I don't really know that mechanism. But the idea is that those things can be reused, and also the body appears to be picking, or the cells appear to be picking things that are damaged in order to clean them up. So uh, if you looked around my kitchen table on the part you can't see, you'd notice I have a bunch of stuff piled up there because I've been doing work and so I've got all kinds of little things. I've got a couple pens. I've got some envelopes of letters that have come in. I've got a small package of chia seeds. I've got my uh, audio uh, recorder. I've got my light meter, and I've got a clip for the for some papers and a whole bunch of stuff. Now I could get around to you know taking those things and putting them away, throwing away the trash, and this is the throwing away the trash inside the cell part. 
But it doesn't happen if we are fed at a constant high level of, you know, plenty of glucose, plenty of fructose, plenty of protein. In fact, all of those things contribute then to us not cleaning up our lives inside, inside the cells, you know, and our, I don't know how many cells we have. Is it 30 billion, 100 billion? I don't know if anybody knows for sure. <laughs> and of course, then we could get into the discussion of how many cells live in our gut that are not part of our body. That's another story. Uh, that's the microbiome or whatever. So getting back to autophagy. Autophagy is that cleanup process that happens only when we deprive ourselves of food for a little while, or in this case, uh, reduce the amount of food dramatically. And it's probably a key to longer life, being able to clean up stuff. So uh, that's, that's that idea. And um, so I hope you've heard a couple words, maybe you know already, maybe you don't. Apoptosis, autophagy, and they're part of this process. I know that apoptosis is triggered by the mitochondria, and I think that there may also be some triggering of uh, autophagy, but I don't know whether it's from the nucleus or from the mitochondria. I think it's the mitochondria, or maybe some both. So we'll find out. Maybe someday I'll look it up and Maybe it's been work, worked on already. Maybe people know about it, and maybe they don't yet. Maybe they haven't figured it all out. But I know that there was a Nobel Prize awarded um, in regard to autophagy, I guess, a couple of years ago. So I, suspo I suppose somebody must have known something. I know you don't get, <laughs> get a Nobel Prize. Well, at least in science, you, you don't get a Nobel Prize <laughs> without any data. Anyway. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, uh, I hope you're all doing okay. And if you're going through this like me, it was a it was an okay morning. I got through it. I was weak. I did go out. I had some errands. I had to go to the post office in the bank and over to somewhere else. Oh, buy some gasoline. And um, I'm not sure what else. Maybe that's about all. Um, maybe this afternoon I may go out and get a cup of coffee later. <laughs> the kind with a little caffeine in it. But um, it's nice of you to listen. Thank you. Well, here is my final meal of the fasting mimicking diet redneck version. Uh, I uh, this is uh, day five, and also this is my second month. This is the second pass at doing these five days. So tomorrow morning I get to have oatmeal. <laughs> I get to have some blueberries in it, and um, I get to eat other starches and vegetables and fruit, and the rest of the day. And I'm going to have a great day. <laughs> um, uh, today's been okay. Uh, I've been out a couple of different times in the car, and it's been a real hot day, so especially the af afternoon trip, <laughs> crazy stuff. The humidity is 0% where we are, and uh, I don't know if it gets that low very often, but that's pretty low. And so the air temperature outside currently is about 110. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with this. This is about repair and really kind of a house cleaning and uh, the house cleaning is happening now and then after I start eating again no ordinary foods will be the repair. Now the company Nutra Stem, well actually N Natura Therapeutics, Nutra Stem Active is what I have been taking and this has the, uh, it has 2,000 units of vitamin D which is a hormone it has um, some EGCG and some other polyphenols from green tea. It has blueberry powder. And then it has something called L-carnosine, not L-carnitine, L-carnosine, which I looked up and it's a combination of two amino acids, aniline and histidine. Apparently this, uh, this one comes from um, animals, animal flesh, whatever. Today in, the, in my shipment, I received the order that were actually ordered from them, which was Nutristem Cardio. Now, the one I have been taking, I've got two hands, I could hold both. This one has Rhodiola rosea, which is a, a, um, an herb from, well, it used to be called Siberia. I don't know if it's from there or not, um, but it's, a, it's a, an adaptogen, so it helps people, and I don't know whether it helps to 
rest restore the activity of stem cells or not. But the other, the basic ingredient, the base formula for this is believed to help the stem cells to be activated. Uh, Nutristem Cardio is the one that came in today. Instead of having the ro rhodiola rosea, it has grape skins. Uh, so I think what they're trying to do is get some resveratrol. Uh, you know, but they're they're going with grape skins, which is actually, I think, pretty nice because it gives you all the stuff that's there. And there might be a whole bunch of trace things in there that might be good. So I may use that later, but uh, I'll work on this one for for now. Oh, tonight's menu. <laughs> I bet you can. I bet you can guess. <laughs> Tomato soup. Uh, Norwegian seeded cracker. And I have my, this is not regular lemonade, this is the juice of one lemon. We are fortunate to have the Myers lemon tree out in our front yard and the lemons from there are fabulous. And so I've just taken the juice of one lemon and put uh, water and I'll have that uh, as my beverage, beverage and I also have uh, black uh, decaf coffee. And tonight I sort of went hog wild and treated myself from that, you know, that place that sells coffee. <laughs> Um, I got the um, the espresso, and I, I make I'm gonna have them make an americano. Now, in terms of the regular brewed coffee that they have, the drip coffee, if you get a 12 ounce cup of coffee, which they call tall in the size, they say that you have 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is about twice as much as an ordinary restaurant cup of coffee. And then their decaf, that you have 25 milligrams of, of uh, uh, caffeine in the decaf. So it's not decaf all the way, it's just decaf part way. Uh, I don't know about the espresso because I haven't looked it up lately. But in general, when you make espresso, the coffee beans are wet less time, the ground coffee beans. And so it's believed that you have actually a lower amount of espresso. Uh, caffeine in that particular type of serving. But of course, if you make a number of, you know, um, I don't know what they call it, shots, then you may get plenty of caffeine. Anyway, I, I do enjoy it and I'm going to continue. Uh, I, I used to be a person that put uh, cream in my coffee. And when I said bye-bye to dairy, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. And it's it's fine. It's okay. This is this is what my parents drank. This is what my grandparents drank. <laughs> you know, both sides. Um, you couldn't go to visit one of them without somebody offering you a cup of coffee, and it was always black coffee. And maybe they could find the sugar if you, were, but uh, nobody put cream in their coffee. No, that was that was for you know teenagers. Anyway, that's about it, um, except to say that I am not quite as weak as I felt the last month when I did this on the final evening, but I'm a little achier and uh, I have a condition in my body that uh, causes me to be a little unbalanced. And I've been trying to push this side of my chest out, uh, working on physical therapy for the last year or so. And I, I get some pain from that. And, uh, and I would have to say it's been uncomfortable but it's okay. I'm going to get through it. So this is Richard Lund saying thank you for watching. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole breakdown on this whole deal, but um, I may add some stuff at the tail of after this, but I'm not going to tell you about everything in the first place. Again, the notion is let's take our a break for our body to do some house cleaning. And then after the house cleaning, let's put the best in there so we can build up our lives again. Thank you, and goodbye. Well, it's me again. <laughs> I thought you were done with me, right? But uh, I'm back. Morning of day six, and um, I'm not gonna, you know, videotape what I eat or talk about that very much. Just to say I'm really excited about my my, uh, my oatmeal. I usually use the, uh, I think they're called uh, five minute oats or uh, normal rolled oats. And I put some blueberries in. Uh, and I also added some walnuts. I put more walnuts on today than I, I normally do. 
But uh, walnuts are, you know, a good dietary source of some omega-3s and some fiber. And for me, it's a good choice. And uh, I'm also going to have some of these uh, Brazil nuts. I have them once in a while. There's something in there. I think it's selenium that uh, is, is uh, high in, in those kind of nuts. And I'm going to have some tea. I'm still, I like my American ginseng. In fact, it has kind of reminded me that I miss, miss this particular adaptogenic herb. Adaptogens, again, are the type of herb that broadly helps you. Strengthens what's weak and uh, tones down the excesses. So, at least that's, that's the way the Chinese think about it. And I have a, a correction to make. Or it's really just, a, you know, it's kind of like, what did I learn? Well, I learned that don't go by memory when you're thinking about converting things. I think if you look back to day two, I said that I was using four tablespoons of glycerin. Remember this big bottle? <laughs> I have an apology to make to glycerin. Glycerin, I'm sorry. I, bet I, I trashed you. I talked badly about you. I just used too much. <laughs> okay. What I did was I thought that a tablespoon was equal to five milliliters or five grams. And of course I was inaccurate because it was a teaspoon is the five milliliter size. So, you know, for you folks that are pretty good at math, I messed up. And um, I'm sorry about that. But, you know, that, that's why we do this. So we, we learn by doing, right? Anyway, um, I did see that difference on the morning of day three. I didn't have that taste of acetone in my mouth. And so that's why I discontinued it. Next go around next month, I think I will try it again, but I will use just one tablespoon instead of four, which would equal, roughly speaking, about maybe 15 grams of uh, glycerin in the water. And uh, see how that does for me. It may help me get through things a little easier. Maybe I'll sleep better at night, or maybe not. I'm not sure. My pain level this morning is diminished. I was able to rest for a long time. Uh, I still have some trouble with sleep, but not uh, not like before. In some of the nights, maybe two of the nights, pretty rough sleep. And um, I think what else I can say is that what I'm returning to is what I normally eat, which is a starchy... Uh, a starch solution uh, plant diet uh, focused around starches and then with added uh, vegetables and fruit. And uh, I believe that I've, I've heard, seen, or seen somewhere where Walter Longo recommended on the, the transition day, you know, day six, that you eat basically what I eat normally. <laughs> Uh, not to go out for a big steak dinner, if that's what you usually have. Or, you know, uh, lots of french fries or, you know, whatever. The, you know, the, the stuff that I have given up. Of course, I ate it for 64 years and thought nothing of it. <laughs> Which just tells you, <laughs> even an old dog can learn a few new tricks. Anyway, I just want to thank you for tuning in, and I probably will post on some other subjects along the way. There have been some very interesting things I have run across. One of the things I've been doing while I've been doing the Fasting Mimicking Diet Redneck version is watching a lot of video, um, also reading papers. I've been learning a lot about <laughs> various things, and I'll probably talk about them because I like to talk. Can you tell? <laughs> this is Richard Lund signing out saying, may you live a hundred healthy years and enjoy them all.